camera projection, camera mapping or recently 2.5D. Those are all names of a technique used in the VFX industry almost as often as green screen keying. It allows creating digital set extensions and adding depth to flat matte paintings, or turning still images into animations. Many movies would not look as we know them without this technique. Let me tell you how camera projections work, and how it was invented. Before the digital revolution, what filmmakers used to extend their sets or to create new environments, were matte paintings. Using traditional, painted-on-glass matte painting forced the camera to be locked, or allowed to do only simple panning, by using the nodal point of the camera to avoid any parallax, which would break the illusion. In 1991, Industrial Light and Magic was working on visual effects for Steven Spielberg's movie, Hook. It was their biggest project, in terms of VFX, since Return of the Jedi. But aside from all their great work, they've created one innovation, on which modern visual effects rely heavily. The movie is featuring the first ever dimensional matte painting, where a traditional matte painting was mapped onto 3D geometry, allowing for camera parallax and resulting in a truly spectacular shot, of Pan flying towards Neverland. The shot is composited of beautiful painting, done by Matt artist, Yusei Uesugi. A blue screen pass of Robin Williams shot on a motion rig, as well as a motion control shot of cotton clouds. Also, the static painted waterfall was replaced with some simple particle system, to add some life to it. Projecting the matte painting onto a simple 3D geometry, is what allowed the camera to be moving, and creating an illusion of depth. If we take the original painting, and put it into 3D space, we can move around with our camera. However the image is still a flat painting. By adding some simple deformation to our flat card, it starts to turn into a three-dimensional environment. The matte painting is projected from a camera, which position, angle and focal length, should match the settings of the camera that would be used to shoot this image. And then, it's wrapping around the 3D geometry. Now we can move our camera to create an illusion of flying over the island. You can replicate this effect in real life, using a projector and setting it to display image for example on a wall corner. This way you are wrapping a flat image projection, around your room geometry. The illusion of depth, and the parallax effect, will work correctly only for camera movement which is not too far from the original angle. If you tilt your camera too much, the trick will be revealed. Creating digital sets with camera projections has a lot of benefits. First of all, it's a lot faster than building the environment completely as 3D objects. You can use matte paintings or real photographs to have a completely photorealistic result. But even if you have created it as 3D graphics, and your camera movement is not very complicated, you can save a lot of time, by rendering just one frame, and projecting it, instead of long hours rendering of all frames. Camera projections are not limited to static images, you can project video footage, or actors shot on green screen, and position them in your 3D set extension. Complex camera projections for VFX are usually done with Foundry Nuke, a compositing software which is a standard in the industry. But this technique is available in almost all 3D packages, like Maya, 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D, or Blender. Some basic 2.5D effect can also be achieved in Adobe After Effects, camera projection technique has evolved since its beginnings, and today it's utilized not only for projecting matte paintings, but also for stabilizing camera movement, matching camera movement of two different footage elements, or helping to paint out unwanted elements, like camera rigs or wires. It would be difficult to find a film containing VFX, in which camera projections are not being used. If you'd like to get more interesting videos about VFX and its history, don't forget to subscribe.